Okay, well, the first thing I'm noticing is the wall art. We've got fish on one side and octopus on the other. I'm liking this already. We got the theme going around the tank. I dig it, let's continue. All right, first things off the bat that I'm noticing, we have the lights. These look like hydras on a rail. I'm seeing screen tops, so this is great. Even though this is an open top tank, there's no canopy on it. He has done a great thing and added screen tops. Few things are as worse as coming home and finding a crispy fish on your floor because it jumped out. Even though at the moment I don't see any wrasses in this tank, there looks like just tangs at the moment from what I can see. They could still jump. If you have an open top tank, you gotta protect it with screens. We've got a Neptune auto feeder up there as well, so I'm guessing we're gonna see an apex on this thing. You can actually see it over there on the right. Oh, look at this. All right, so one thing I like about this stand, this may be a mass produced stand, but what I really like about this so far is that there's no vertical brace in the center. So he's got all the room in the world to work on his sump and his sump takes up the whole space underneath the tank. If you've got that much space to work with and you don't have to put dosing containers or ATO containers underneath your tank, why not fill it up with a sump? Then you have more room to work in your sump or at a refugium like he did. Use that space. A few things irk me as much as seeing this nice tank and then you open up underneath the stand and there's this tiny sump and then all this open space that they've done nothing with. So this guy filled it up. He's got access with no vertical brace so he can get in there and work on a sump. Then he's got a large sump to take up all the space underneath the tank. I dig that. Okay, we're going over here to the control panel. I was right about an apex. I gotta pause it. Okay, other than the jugs that are just kind of stuck to the side there, they're kind of an eyesore because everything else on this control panel is really clean. Like he surface mounted it. We've got a little bit of a shelf there, but other than that, like everything's nice and clean and mounted on the surface. We've got a trident down there. We've got dosing containers. We've got different KMR dosing pumps for each dosing solution. They're all color coded. He must watch the show. Good job. And like, I even like how there's like a gap uh, in the, between the mounting board so the cords can go underneath. Everything here is clean other than the jug sitting on the side, but I'll let that fly for the moment. That's not gonna cause a fire. It's just gonna be a little bit of a distraction. We got a trident down here. Again, I'm digging that every solution, probably alkalinity, calcium, and magnesium that he's dosing is dosed with a different line. So it's easy to color code, it's easy to follow because it's color coded. You get over to your sump, you're like, is this the alkalinity line or the calcium? I don't know. When it's color coded, it's very easy to tell. So good job on that. I am digging that. And every solution also is labeled. It's very easy to follow what is what on this system. So we've got some gyres going on here. We've got a Vortec uh, top off running to the uh, ATO there. We've got a battery backup as well. This guy is prepared for something that may go wrong with this tank. I am, I love this control cabinet. It's off to the side. It's not gonna get splashed. It's not under there with the moisture. Um, I dig it. Okay, so now on to the livestock in the tank. Stop here for just a second. This looks like a Lobo, maybe well so there. Trachophilia, that thing's freaking bright. That's standing out and it's fluffy. It's healthy, we got some cleaner shrimp in here. Look at that sucker. It's all fluffy and it's even moving around in the flow. We got a chromus, we got an orange shoulder tang. Looks like a little A can there. Let's see what else we got. Oh, some majorities. Okay. All right, so two things jump out of me in this shot. One, we have some spongeoides up high that are already encrusted. Here's the fun thing about spongeoides. They're really hardy. They grow really well. If you're killing spongeoides, you probably got bigger problems in your tank. Now, it is also very weedy. It takes over. People that get them, they're like, I love it. I put it in the tank. It was small. It was bright. And then when you start having success, like six months down the line, you're going to hate it because it's encrusted on the rock. You're not going to get it off. It's going to grow really fast, shade stuff underneath it. So if you really like the spongeoides, I would put it somewhere on a rock that I can easily remove. So when you get tired of it, you can get out of there and you won't hate yourself. Not a fan of the, which looks to be a lepthia or another, a leather there. 
Uh, it's just not my taste, nothing wrong with it. A little bit of a candy cane there. It's kind of like a sad, oh, it's a sad candy cane down there by itself. We got two, maybe three little polyps. It's okay to start with frags, but it's like, where are its buddies? Like, let's get some other stuff in this tank. Let's have a look around here. Okay, we're going back underneath. All right, let's go back to the livestock for just a second here. While someone would say there's not a lot to look at, like we got two cleaner shrimps, we got some fish. Okay, so I would like to see more coral. Maybe this guy is between coral, he's just adding on to the tank, it's new. Sure, you've got plenty of real estate. Let me back up and get a nice shot of the, there you go. So let's just take a quick look at the aquascape because we have that to work with. So over here on the right, we've got, it's about halfway up. We've got plenty of places for corals, both up high, with little slopes down there to the front. We've got some islands on the front left and the front right. So if you wanted to put, say your spongeoides there, get it out of the way and you can easily move it if it doesn't work out. I like that as well. Let's uh, back all the way up to the front of the video and have a wide shot look at this tank uh, for the aquascape. Okay, so I like this scape. It's got arches. We've got high part over here. We've got a little lower section in the front, which I like. We have a cave over there in the right, places for fish to swim through and move around. I've got some lower places up front, some islands. Some people would say they'd like to see more arches or maybe go higher even. I would be okay with this scape because I'm going to put some stuff on that overflow over there on the left, either in a crusty Monty like a Superman or Sunset uh, or somewhere another, one of my favorite Montes like Ondata or Satosa. I would cover up the overflow with that. But overall, in terms of what I see in the tank, it's got a good foundation. Now I would build on that. Okay, let's go back to underneath since he's given us a close-up look of the sump. All right, here we go. So we have some nice plumbing here. I'm not a fan of home improvement store fittings and unions. They tend to leak, especially the valves, but I'll give it to them. We've got a white and red color code going on here that matches things. Okay, so if I really wanted to be picky, and again, this is just because things have, clearly this person has thought things out. Maybe he likes the red pipe. Maybe he had it laying around. Some people would say you should match the blue pipe to the red, blue sump. Look, that's not a, a, a ding. Maybe he likes that idea, maybe he doesn't. If you wanted to match everything up, sure, get the blue pipe. For me, I'm a red fan anyway. Forget blue, everyone's doing blue. I'll stick with the red. We got a flow sensor there from the Neptune Systems Apex, so he knows if he has water coming back into his tank. We have a power bar up high where he can plug things in that don't need to be plugged into the Apex. Okay. Some people would say you shouldn't have that power bar, especially at that outlet over there on the left, right next to that union. Here's the thing. That's a drain. If you're pulling the sump out on this tank, it's probably because you're breaking the whole thing down. That power bar probably isn't gonna be energized. You shouldn't have splashing out of that union up into that outlet. Would it be nice if that outlet was a little bit further away from the union? Sure. Uh, I'm not really going to beat anyone up on that one. I'm okay with it. I mean, I like to see it moved, but it's not the end of the world. I can live with that. So one nice thing about having this power bar back there is you have ways to power stuff outside of the apex, things that need to be constantly on. This looks like some kind of wireless access point, uh, a USB charger. So you don't necessarily have to grab another energy bar on your apex to plug those things in. They always need power. You probably shouldn't, <clears throat> don't ever need to turn them off. So I kind of like that touch having constant on outlets <clears throat> underneath the tank. So we've got a skimmer here. We've got the probes and a probe holder, which is great, which is going to keep them secure. And I'm noticing this Chato is like the wheel of Chato. Wheel of Chato. It's like, let's back up. It's like the perfect roll. Look at that. Look at that. People would die to have that kind of Chato roll. Roll. Pointed case, pointed case. Point is, it's great that it rolls. Some people say you have to have Chato to roll or to tumble to make it grow. That's not true. But in this case, it's not going to hurt them. And like, that's like the roll to die for. I dig it. Wonder how we got that done. All right. So we've got some more plumbing over here. We have the dual meter reactor plumbed in off the return line. I love that. Why not use your return pump to power your meter reactor? Um, great use of a pump there. Okay, so if you really want to be picky, he went from red pipe to white PVC. I mean, that's not bad. It's just like, 
okay, you could really dive in there and be picky if you wanted. I've got the power bar underneath here. All right, so would I like to see a waterproof outlet on the back, uh, on that outlet back there in the back? Sure, it's right there by the return pump. There's some pressure there, there's some media reactor. <clears throat> if you're taking the media reactors off, you happen to spill it. Okay, I would personally put a waterproof outlet on that, cover on that outlet. That's not gonna make or break things. We got a fan going on over the refusion to keep things cool. That's nice, we got a flow sensor. I mean, this is compact, but look, here's a great way to have not a huge tank, not necessarily like a baller system, it's a nice system, but he's got a nice skimmer, refugium, with great flow in there, he's cool in the tank. This is a nice way to have a nice setup without necessarily breaking the bank, as some people would say. And again, I can't get over this Chato roll. <laughs> it's like, perfect. I wonder if it does that even as it gets larger. That's just killer. And like, so, I'm also noticing there's no salt creep underneath here. Everything is really clean. Like, a lot of times you can tell if there was salt creep and they wiped it down. There's none of that on this system. Everything is super, super clean. There's no splatters, it looks like, from the protein skimmer. So that probably doesn't overflow. I mean, this is a nice, clean system that's well thought out, well executed. Put some more coral, coral in your tank, get it going, uh, and you're really gonna have an F-Dream system. Mm -hmm.